I'm an entrepreneur. Right. A lot of them want somebody else to do everything for them, but then they don't understand why their royalty checks are so small. Oh, girl, come on out and party, come club, come this, come that. And then they get mad with me because she don't go nowhere. She run her business every day, all day. I haven't had a vacation in six years because I'm so dedicated. Get it. Not to the people, to my business, to being the absolute best that I can be and delivering the most groundbreaking, motivational, inspiring content that I can. And that's exactly what your content does too. You have to remember in your business, even as an exclusive content creator, you inspire people. People don't think, see, they don't think that they say, oh, he's naked, baby. You know anybody that look like that? Naked? I, I'm honest. No, I know. No. <laughs> like, we don't see this walking around. We don't have access to this walking around. And that's for good reason, because you don't deserve it. It's not going to be in a, an area where it's easily accessible to you. No. This requires a whole bunch of maintenance, a whole bunch of care, a whole bunch of diligence. I can't party all the time. I can't, like, honey, I'm worried about meal plans. I'm worried, like, th this is what your life is. <laughs> yeah, this is what your life is. Like, I have men in my life that take pride in their bodies and who they are, their skin, and they also enrich their minds. But I tell them all the time, you're doing the right thing because the fashion industry where I first started at 22 in Paris is a multi-billion dollar industry. So I don't want to hear somebody tell me, oh, honey, he's just full of himself. Do you know how much money that man can make? He never has to open his mouth. You never have to hear him say hello. I remember when um, it was a long time ago, supermodel Iman, she was, you know, she was the, the it thing. I mean, and everybody loved her and she was so beautiful and this is that and the other. And they finally sit down and interview her and she speaks English and the journalist looks at her like, oh my God, you knew English. She said, of course I know English. You just never asked. Beauty, please. We've heard Naomi speak, but Naomi make her money when she don't speak. She doesn't have to. And that's the same with, I call them my body boys. You got, like, I like I literally, I remember when you were so thin and then you turn around and just, I was like, oh, wow, look at this. <laughs> Say it you know again. What? I said, you know what? It's funny because um, a lot of people, they only see, because I, I remember when we, I had my, on new Instagram and we you finally follow back with each other right um because again I deleted my I was going through something I, I deleted my first Instagram and blah, 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 blah. but a lot of people now right would be like oh my gosh you, you're so hot or da, 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 or you've always been I bet I bet I bet right and then you kind of have to remind people like this didn't happen overnight I promise you it didn't like I had to, like, a lot of people, like, that they're passionate about in their occupation, like, you had to rise and fall and trip and fall again, and then, you you know, you step up and you right, rise again, and it's years, you know what I mean, to get to that. And then, here's the thing, like, everyone, like, glorifies, right, the body, right? Like, oh, my God, your body, right? And then, it's all, and then in my head, it's like, okay, but there's always something I need to work on a little bit more. You know what I mean? So it's just funny how that's, um, how it is like that. Well, get this. It's the first thing that they see and most people are visual. That's okay. Yeah. But you know what? That's okay. Because my face got me indoors that I probably would have never been able to walk into had I done it speaking. I remember when I started my modeling career in New York City, and I remember I'd go to the castings and the agencies and the go sees looking the part. I was always a beautiful man, always. I've always, like I said, I'll be 40 and I look like I'm in my 20s. And I've always been this tall, straight back, thin arms, you know? I've always been this. But the gatekeepers were feminine. Mm. And I had femininity in me, but I could take a mean picture. And they were like, oh, no, you're just not what we're looking for. I had a man 
and this is the thing in that world a lot of the gatekeepers are caucasian so you would think that if the african americans see you and see that you have a potential they're going to help you through mm -mm. because most of them wanted to be what you are and i learned that i had a man say to me i will not call his name um or the agency but he gave me one of my body boys one of my big guys he was a big muscular guy too big for modeling at the time but this director was interested in him for whatever reason but he was smart he got out of it but he he was the only black guy i ever knew that took me to his castings with him because he said to me he was like you're the model i got the location they, they said they wanted to see me i'm taking you with me he was the first one to ever do that and when we got there excuse me, the director gave both of us the cards to the photographer. Oh, both of you have amazing looks, he said. Um, here's the card to the photographer. You need to have your pictures taken. So of course we had to go home. I had a job. I had to go home, make the money, and then take the picture with the photographers. Now I go back, I call, I'm in New York to bring over the photos that I just picked up from the New York fashion photographer. May he rest in peace because he died last year. <laughs> but um, I turn around and I call and I get him on the phone and I'm like, hey, um, I tell him my name is Bjorn and I got your card and you sent me to a photographer and I'm ready to bring in the photos for you to see. He said, with all due respect, ma'am, we don't see women on Wednesdays. I said, uh, that's good. I'm glad I'm not a woman. I'm a man. And he said, you're a man? I said, yes, sir. I'm a man. He said, I'm sorry to say, but you do not sound like a man and do not come back to my agency until you do. And slam the phone in my ear. Devastated me, but I didn't give up. Not too long after that, I was in Paris modeling and then today i have one of the most recognizable speaking and singing voices in the world you see people are full of shit who know <laughs> there's no other way to say it people are full of shit and they want to they want to push that shit into your life and you you just can't allow that you can't allow that. God, it took some time for me to adjust to the South even, you know what I mean? Like, uh, so obviously, I'm, you know, Indianapolis is like Midwest yeah. area. So here in the South, like even like the people and how they think and just how people move here was just so different. And it took me about like, a good, I wanna say year of me just adapting to this new environment. So, yeah, I mean, it's now, now that it has grown on me, I can like live here, obviously. Um, but at first it was really, really hard, really difficult because I just did not whatsoever understood or, uh, and just how people moved here. 